What's up, YouTube? Appreciate y'all staying in with me and staying tuned. And this video, we're going to be doing a video on giving you basically the advice and instructions on how to become a barber. So if you've ever been interested in thinking about becoming a barber or you have uh, someone who's interested in becoming a barber, then you can definitely recommend them to this video. Send them the link. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And let's get into this. So, now, the first thing you need to know is all the legal, the legal mumbo jumbo that comes with being a barber. The reason you need to know this is because you need to know what you're getting into. You need to know what it means to invest and sacrifice your debt and your time into becoming a barber now first of all like any trade you need to go to school for it and when you go to school for it you're gonna get in debt and you're gonna have to enroll and you're gonna have to take time out your life time out your work to be able to basically get this done you're gonna have to do 1500 hours in the state of Texas that's how that works in the state of Texas. Now, if you might be in places like California or uh, other places that might allow you to do like an internship or something like that, stand next to a barber, um, that's fine. I would actually prefer that. I, I would rather that. But in the state of Texas, you have to have 1,500 hours of school time. Now, to enroll into school, there's two ways of the financial uh, aspect and what they expect from you and it's basically this you got the places that charge around four to ten thousand dollars that you usually have to put one to two thousand dollars in deposit and the rest you basically pay off in payments. You also have, which is what I did, the uh, financial aid issue. And with financial aid, you get basically all your money covered and you just kind of got to owe the rest of that. You might get a little bit of a grant, you know, blah, 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 but you're going to owe, you're going to owe most of the money. And it's not going to be you no know, four or ten thousand dollars. You're looking at about twenty thousand plus that you're going to be in debt for. Now, definitely think that through because, like I said, like all trades, you have to go to school and you have to get in debt. So, if you're thinking about becoming a barber, odds are now you can try to do it without a license, but it, even if, even if. A barbershop allows you to work without a license. If you come during inspection, and inspection is basically a person who has a nice little badge and is, you know, coming into the shop to inspect the place and make sure it's clean and not unsanitary and to make sure that all the workers have their license. If you get caught without a license, you could be banned from ever getting your license. And the shop that you're working at would get about a $10,000 fine, which they might not be able to pay off, which means that it, their whole shop could get shut down. And not to mention that you may get a fine as well. So definitely uh, be careful about that. If you're going to be a barber, you're going to have to get into, in, into school and, and you're going to want to do it the right way. Now, school doesn't necessarily teach you how to cut. It, it, it really, in my opinion, doesn't really teach you much. It teaches you how to take the test. And when you take the test, the test, by what I know, doesn't really apply much to what you do afterwards. Now, I mean, you'll learn a little bit about something, something. But really, what you're going to learn off of is the heads that you get in there. And that's how you need to learn as far as at least skill-wise. Now, like, you know you know fancy words for a, a a a freaking bump or 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 unsanitary napkin or towel or something you might find that in the books of school but um you know like even the steps on how to shave and stuff like 
I mean, it doesn't really apply much nowadays. I think uh, the test is kind of like old school. But I'm not going to get too into bashing about the tests and stuff like that. All I'm saying is that when you go to school, you need to be prepared to learn for the test, not necessarily learn for the shop. And what I mean by that is once you get into a barbershop, you're going to really learn how, how to step up your speed and how to step up your skills and how to step up your customer service and all that. Simply because you, you're with the big dogs now. You know, and, and when you're with the big dogs, you got to step up. And um, it, it's, it's, it's kind of like from college football to the NFL, you know what I'm saying? Things change, and it gets a lot harder and a lot tougher, and you got to really step up, and you got to become harder and tougher, you know, because it's the next level. So that's how that works from, from school to the shop. Now, while you're in the school, like I said, you're going to have to do 1,500 hours. You're going to have to enroll. You're probably going to have uniform. You're going to have to wear all black or something like that. And um, you're just going to have to get your time done. And different schedules uh, vary from depending on what school you're going to. Odds are the school is independently owned by someone who basically wanted to open a school and, and you know, get money on you in debt. You know what I'm saying? And But it's just something you have to do if you want to be a, a barber. So that's the whole school situation. And um, other than that, let's get to equipment. You're going to need equipment. Now, you want to be, oh, you want to get things that are affordable, but you need to make sure you get everything you need at the same time. So what you want to start with is a, a basic pair of clippers, which will be able to cover your, your number guards, your one, two, threes, and fours, and stuff like that. They go from a zero to what I would call a half. And um, they, I mean, technically, like this blade says it goes to a triple zero to a one. But I'll just say it goes from a zero to a half, to tell you the truth. Now, it, it, you close it. It comes, like, with a lever that's closed, and you can open the lever. You can close it, and you can open the lever. All right. Now, yours probably might not be white in the inside like this because I got a ceramic blade. That's a whole nother level. But if you're interested in the ceramic blades, I got a review on that, too. But my point is, is that you got to have a main set of clippers like this. And then you want your double zeros, which would be a T outliner like this. Now, mine's are cordless. You don't have to have cordless. It's fine. They're cheaper with, with cords. And that's fine. They even have a little more power with cords. <clears throat> Make sure you got the T-shape. If they're not T-wides, which means that they come out here, and, and if they're only like box shape, don't get those. You don't need those. What you need is some T-shapes. Why do you need T-shapes? Because they don't actually make a closer shave than the box shapes, but they help you with your edge ups. So they help you get a crispier line, especially in the corners. All right? So make sure you have T-wides for your double zero shaver. What happens is this basically shortens what this can't really get down to. And um, that's basically all you need to start making your face. You just need a main clipper. You need your small T-wides. And you'll be, able to, you'll be able to start getting ready on your fades. Now, always make sure you can have a can of Barbicide, Clipicide, I'm sorry. Clipicide is what I got here. Clipicide spray, which is a five-in-one. It's a uh, um, disinfectant, lubricant, it cleans, it cools, and it's anti-rust. So you also have some that's called Andis Cool Care, which you can get, works fine. Wall has a pair, has a, a set of clipper spray that is trash. Do not get the wall clipper spray, it's horrible. You can find it at Walmart for like half the price of these, but it works horribly. Don't get it. And if you're going to get a sanitizing spray, when you get sanitizing spray, because you have to have sanitizing spray, get some clipper side or get cool care and spray your clippers before every single customer. Do not put these blades on another customer after you use the first one and you didn't spray any disinfectant on it. Make sure you spray each and every time. It's easy. You take off the cap, shake it a little bit, spray the outside, spray the inside, give it just a little bit of distance, 
spray it down it's good it's disinfected you're good to go okay so make sure you have some spray and that's pretty much that get you some shears which are scissors to be able to cut the long hair and you're ready to go i mean that's pretty much all the equipment you need you also you also need a cape make sure you have a cape um make sure you have some kind of good lighting even like a bar light this is what i use for my uh hair cutting i use it as one of my lights and i also use it for these videos so you know have you have you some extra lights in the corners and angles that you're going to need it at um just make sure you have lights and make sure that you have a good chair that your customers will be comfortable in if you can't afford to get a barber chair just yet or you're just not in a place for to be able to like really cut hair just yet you know just just use what you can for your customers to make them comfortable if you're practicing outside of school and stuff like that now uh, when you're in the school most of the stuff is going to be provided for you also uh, in school you're going to be given a kit that will have everything that you need in it basically especially to start with so actually if you're starting school don't worry about picking this stuff out because school's going to already be picking it out for you they're going to have everything you need i'm sorry i forgot to tell you that earlier um school's going to have a kit for you that's going to be everything that you need and um but if you're not starting school and you're just kind of doing it at home and you're just kind of figuring it out which is basically how how i started then uh you know get you a main pair get you uh t wides make sure you have some sanitizing spray for it and then get to work you know youtube uh tutorials and i'll be starting tutorials soon so be sure to look out for that and let me wrap this up. I appreciate y'all watching my video. This is how to become a barber and, and what you need to mentally prepare yourself for and financially prepare yourself for and the tools that you need to get to prepare yourself for being a barber. So if you have any questions, anything you want me to touch on or any suggestions, be sure to write or comment in the comment below. And don't forget to like and subscribe this. I promise more stuff's coming. It's going to get good. It's going to get interesting. Stick to me. I'll share everything I can with you. I appreciate all the love and support that I get from y'all. Thank y'all so much. I'll see y'all next time. Peace.